Hey guys, this is Alan and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to grow a silk floss tree. If you're not familiar with this tree, it's alright. It gives you flowers that look like this. But the main attraction to this plant are the thorns. It gets thorns all over the tree, on the trunk and the branches, but they are not your regular thorns. As the tree gets older, they get thick and people seem to like them. Well, if you want to learn how to grow this tree, today I'm going to be giving you everything that you need to know in order to successfully grow one from some requirements, watering requirements, what type of root system the tree has, and also towards the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you my personal tips on how to successfully grow this plant. Let's get started. All right, let's talk about the silk floss tree. Since a lot of you probably have never heard of this tree before, I'm gonna give you a quick summary. The reason people like the silk floss tree is because, well, it has thorns. But the thorns are throughout the entire trunk and branches. When you put your tree in the ground, they tend to get really fat, like this over here. Now, these trees are grown from seed. I don't know of any known um, varieties out there, so you are going to have variations. Some trees have more thorn thorns than others, so if your tree doesn't look exactly the same, that's okay. And you also have to understand that your tree will look like this um, as it gets older. Young trees or trees in containers, they do not have as many thorns as your tree will in the ground. Now the name comes from silk floss. It comes from the actual flowers. And when they get pollinated and closed up, they turn into like cotton balls th throughout the entire tree. And uh, you can actually use that as a silk floss replacement. Hence the name, silk floss. Now the tree you see in front of me has been in the ground for about two years. And right now it's about 15 feet tall. Mind you, it has taken damage, frost damage, for the past two winters. So it did die back a little bit and it grew back. But just to give you a visual, when I first put it in the ground, it was a one gallon, probably about this size right here, just like that. And from that size, two years ago, it has turned into a 15 foot, uh, foot tall tree. Fully grown, this tree is gonna be a lot taller. But anyways, enough talking. Let's get to the growing conditions. Sun requirements. Silk Floss requires full sun anywhere in the US. It will take full sun in my area. It will take full sun in yours. Will the tree grow in the shade? Yes, it will. But usually in the shade, they take longer to establish themselves in the ground before they start growing. And when they do start growing, they grow very leggy and straight up trying to reach the sun. Full darkness is not going to work well for this tree. Another thing you gotta keep in mind, especially in areas with extreme temperatures, the first summer in the ground, your tree is going to sunburn in full sun. Your leaves are gonna get crispy, just like this leaves right here. But throughout the entire canopy, the sun will not kill your tree, I promise you, as long as you water. This is normal in extreme temperatures, the first summer in the ground. Once your tree is fully grown, rooted in the ground like this one right here, you will not experience any sunburn. And you can see all the way on top of, of the canopy out there, I have no sunburn at all. Winter protection. This tree in my area is frost sensitive. Whatever the ice touches will damage your tree. How can you protect your tree like that? Well, it, well, the first winter you are going to need to cover it. Make sure you protect it from the frost, but as the tree gets rooted in the ground, it will actually tolerate it a lot better. And it's normal for the tree to take frost damage once it gets this tall because there's no way you can frost protect this tree like this. So what happens every winter, the upper canopy will take frost damage, but you know, it, it's fine. Once it warms up again, it will grow new branches, no issues. Cold tolerant, all my trees, silk floss over the years have taken low 20s, no issues. Even silk floss trees in containers, breathe uh, temperatures in the low 20s. Prolonged temperatures in the low 20s, um, the longest I ever been that cold here without any breaks is 12 hours or so. Um, if your temperatures are in the low 20s for days on end, um, your tree probably will not make it. Or if you get colder than that, or if your ground freezes. 
So just keep that in mind if you want to grow this tree in your area if it gets that cold. Root system. Silk floss trees have a actual um, fibrous root system. Considering the size of the tree, uh, this is surprising to me, but they have a lot of fibrous roots and then they stay shallow to the surface, only a few feet. So they are actually safe to plant close to um, structures, walls, your house, but you have to understand your tree is going to get tall and then the branches will break. So keep that in mind. Tree structure. Well, like I said, this tree right here has an upright canopy. It's not really bushy unless you prune it. The only reason mine is actually bushier at the bottom is because, well, like I said, for the past two winters, it has taken frost damage and uh, we have to prune it back. And anytime you prune your tree uh, from the top down, it promotes a lower branching like this. But if you didn't prune your silk floss, normally you are going to have a single trunk, maybe two trunks sometimes, and uh, most of your canopy is going to be concentrated on the top. Now this tree usually fully grown, depending on your temperatures in your area, will be between, I would say, 20 to 40 feet. The more tropical the temperatures in your area, the taller and bigger the tree is going to be. Uh, the cooler the temperatures in your area or non-tropical temperatures, then obviously your tree is going to remain smaller. Like I said, this is two years right here and uh, it's about 15 feet tall. So they do grow fast and uh, I always recommend to plant your tree in the ground. Your silk floss tree needs to be fully grown in order for it to flower. Normally from the time that you put it in the ground to the time that it's fully grown will depend on the temperatures in your area and if it takes damage in the winter or not. Let's say your tree takes no damage in the winter time and it's able to grow non-stop. Um, you are looking at about, I would say three years, maybe four years. Now if your silk floss tree takes damage every single winter from frost, it may take a little longer because every year is recovering from the damage that it takes in the winter time. But it needs to be fully grown in order for your tree to flower. Normally in containers, you are not going to see flowers on your silk floss. The only time you are going to see flowers on your silk floss tree in containers is if the tree was able to root itself into the ground and obviously it got full size because it's rooting itself in the ground and then it was able to flower. Once it starts flowering, you will see flowers in the fall. Um, and they usually the flowers stay there through the winter into spring the following year. And it's a really nice uh, thing to see because the entire canopy will cover itself with flowers. And then when the flowers get pollinated, it will turn into like cotton balls. So eventually your tree is going to be like completely covered with flowers. And then it's going to be like a massive cotton ball once all your flowers are pollinated. So it's a nice tree to have. But remember, it's going to litter because anything the flowers will drop to the ground. So if that's an issue, keep that in mind if you want to grow a silk floss tree. Water requirements. Well, in containers, always follow the 50% rule. And that applies for most of our plants. As soon as your container is dry, 50%, however long it took to go from wet to dry 50%, that's exactly how often you water your tree. Just to give you an idea, these trees right here are fully rooted in those containers. They are actually root bound. So last summer, I was watering these trees three times daily because three times daily, they were drying 50%. Uh, that's an easy rule to follow to water your plants in containers. Nobody can tell you how often to water your plants because plants are just living beings just like you. And just like you, can anybody tell you how often to drink water? and how much every single day? No, it's the same thing for your plants. Now you're planting the ground. Let's say you just planted a silk floss tree in the ground. How are you going to water it? Well, the first summer you are going to need to follow the finger method. It's very similar to the 50% rule, but instead you're gonna stick your finger right next to the trunk, a few inches away, all the way down. And then the minute you no longer feel moisture on the tip of your finger, However long it took to go from wet to that point, that's exactly how often 
you are going to water your silk flustery for the first summer. Now, after the first year in the ground, then you need to deeper water, meaning that you wanna water and wet the soil at least uh, a few feet and then let it dry one to two feet in between watering. That silk flush tree you saw in the ground, that's two years in the ground. Right now, with my drippers, like this one right here, this one puts out 13 gallons of water an hour. I usually don't have it fully open, only halfway open because I don't want to just flood the entire area and then the water evaporating. But when I do water, I water for about six hours. Right now, every four days. In the middle of the summer when my temperatures were 100 degrees every single day, I was watering this, th this tree just like that every two days. So, and the tree seems to like it. Um, it's growing just fine. Six hours may seem like a lot of water, but that uh, emitter right there, it's only putting out about, I would say six or seven gallons of water per hour times six. So, I mean, it's really not that much water if you think about it. Whenever you use your washing machine, your washing machine us uses more water than I'm using right here to water my, my uh, tree every, uh, every four days right now. So, a lot of people are so afraid to water their plants um, and they think they're wasting water or, they use a lot, or their plants use a lot of water, but they never actually think about all the water consumption in their own houses. I mean, how many gallons of water do you use when you take a shower? So I would rather go out, grow a tree than wasting water, um, you know, in any other places like that. Fertilization. So how do you fertilize your silk cloth tree? Um, you're planting a container, any slow release fertilizer will work. You do not need to buy any special fertilizers. Why do I always recommend slow release fertilizers? Well, I do because it's extremely hard to over fertilize your plants when you use a slow release fertilizer, just like when you use organic fertilizers. So that is for container plants. For in-ground plants, like the one you saw earlier, that one you can use any organic material, compost, cow poop, uh, chicken poop, bat poop, whatever poop you wanna use, it will be fine. That tree in the front, uh, all I use is ho horse poop. So once a year, I get a layer of uh, poop, make sure it's fully uh, dry, and then I put about one to two inches all the way around the tree and then put mulch over it. And that is it. That's all I need to do. And even if I didn't do that, uh, the tree will be fine because water is a lot more important than any fertilizer you can ever put in the ground. Because you have to understand, if there is no water in the soil, your plant will not be able to eat. So concentrate on water in your tree rather than fertilizing it, thinking that you're gonna be able to make it grow faster. Container grown, or growing your silk floss in a container. Well, silk floss trees do okay in a container. Indefinitely, no. All these trees you see here, they are about 10 feet tall right now, maybe a little taller. And some of them are bigger than others, and that's simply because we grew these guys from seed. And seeds are not true to, um, they're not true, so you're gonna get variations. Like you can see some trees right here have more, uh, have more thorns and others do not. But that changes normally once you put your tree in the ground. But in containers, they grow very, very fast. So can you keep it in a container for a few years? Yes. These trees you see here, they were probably seedlings this big last year, early last year. So these trees in containers, two years and these are 15 gallon containers. They are already root bound and they probably have been root bound for the past six months and I just have not been able to up pot them because I don't have the space to up potting into bigger containers. So, but I mean, look how big this one is. This one probably rooted in the ground and that's why this one is bigger than the others. But yeah, if you want to grow your silk floss tree in, the, uh, in a container, you can for a few years. But eventually you got to understand that it's going to outgrow your container. And at what point are you going to stop? Can you keep your silk floss indefinitely in the container? Well, not without maintenance, meaning you're going to have to keep up potting it or you're going to need to root prune. And that is you trim the canopy 25 to 50% every single year and then you you cut all the roots about an inch 
away all the way around and then on the bottom and then you repot it in the same container that will buy you another year but you're gonna have to do that every single year for the life of the tree if you want to keep it in a container long term i don't recommend it what i recommend you to do is to plant it in the ground all right guys so that brings us to my personal growing tips i've been growing um silk floss trees for a few years now we grow them from seed and I actually tried some cuttings uh, this year and they took just fine. They are very easy to grow from seed, but like I said earlier, they are not true to seed. So you are going to get variations. So if you wanna grow your tree, um, I mean, you can buy seeds and uh, try it yourself. Uh, these trees grow mainly when the night temperatures are hot. The hotter the night temperatures, the faster they grow. So if you wanna grow your silk floss tree from seed or you wanna do a cutting, you wanna make sure your night temperatures are at least 60, 70 degrees minimum. Uh, if it's cold, just wait until the following year where your temperatures are gonna warm up. Remember, your silk floss tree is going to sunburn the first summer in the ground. That is normal. Another thing that is normal in containers that do not tolerate extreme temperatures um, as well as when they are fully rooted in the ground. So if your silk floss tree is sun burning, that is normal, especially if your silk floss tree is in a container. Do not panic. This mainly happens, especially when the temperatures reach 100 degrees every single day uh, and, you know, and higher. So. This is normal for me in the summer. They're actually uh, growing new leaves now, but they looked a lot worse in the summer. That is not going to kill your tree. This is only cosmetic damage. As long as you water your tree, your tree will be fine. But if you don't water your tree, your tree will die very quickly. Another rec recommendation that I have for you, if you're looking into buying a silk floss tree, does size matter? No, it does not, because these trees grow very fast. So if you can find a smaller tree, which normally is going to be a lot cheaper than a bigger tree, go ahead and buy that one and put it in the ground. Planting a bigger tree is not gonna give you any benefits. The tree is not stronger. The tree is not gonna grow faster. It's just you get instant gratification by planting a bigger tree when you do get a bigger tree. Now the trees you saw in the back, I have those trees on sale. So I'm trying to move them out because they grow just so fast and I really don't wanna put them in bigger containers because I know by the end of the uh, next year, they're gonna be fully rooted in those bigger containers. And then what am I gonna do, put them in even bigger containers? No, it just doesn't work that well. So I have those trees really cheap right now. Um, you know, and just trying to move them out is the easiest way for me. Uh, and you learn over time, you know, what sells and what doesn't sell. These trees are very nice, but they're not very popular in my area, so a lot of people don't know it. Uh, but other than that, guys, I don't have any other uh, personal tips besides just water your tree, make sure you're frost protected, and uh, give it time because normally once you put them in the ground, they will take at least one year in the ground to root themselves fully before they grow. If you put your silk floss tree in the ground and it's been a few months and it's not growing, well, your tree is not rooted in the ground. Now, remember that one year rule applies to trees that are growing without any interruptions. Meaning, you put your tree in the ground, you water it, and it never wilted on you. Now, let's say during the rooting process, your tree wilts for whatever reason, or it takes frost damage, guess what? Now, instead of taking a year to root itself in the ground fully, it's gonna take a year and a half. And for that time, your tree is not going to grow. This is normal, so if that's happening to you, now you know why. But anyways, that was Growing Silk Floss Tree. So if you guys have any questions, as always, comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.